What's going on everyone? In today's Bookmine Academy video, we're gonna show you how you can set up the free Amazon repricer and Amazon Seller Central. But before we get into that, I'm joining my co-host and co-founder, Victor Gallegos. What's going on, man? How's it going, Joji? Who doesn't like free? I mean, let's really uh, show everyone how to do this uh, Amazon repricer the right way. Yep, Victor and I, if you didn't know, we're both very frugal men and uh, both <laughs> financially independent. And a lot of it comes with, hey, how can you do things for free? So. We want to show you guys how you can set up a repricer, Amazon's repricer, for free. This is going to change the price of your books when you list it on Amazon. So if you're somebody who's unfamiliar or a newer bookseller, Victor, what happens when you just simply go to like your inventory on Amazon Seller Center and you just put a price in? Is that repricing or not? No. So when you go in, the I mean, technically, when you go in and put your price in, that's you pricing it for the first time. But it won't do anything else, right? It'll just stay uh, stagnant at that one particular price and won't move unless you come back in again a few days later and price it again. And it just takes a lot of work once you get past, say, 50 books. Right. So imagine you have 50 books in your inventory. You would be manually repricing them. That means you'd be, okay, let's open up the listing. Let's yeah. look at Kiva. Oh, I had it at $50 two days ago. Well, it's still $50. Uh, let's go to $48.99. You would manually type in $48.99, press save. And then now it's stuck at forty eight ninety nine, and it's not changing, right, Victor? It's never it going to go up from now, right? Yep. So, so why would that be a major disadvantage, especially if you're talking about selling books and competing with other booksellers? Yeah, so you're going to be competing with a lot of repricers, right? There's a lot of uh, third party software out there, along with Amazon, that have come up with these uh, software programs that will reprice your books for you every, sometimes up to every second, other ones up to every fifteen minutes. And so when you go and price your book for $49.99, someone will immediately go in and price the book for $49.98. And so you're no longer the, the lowest price. You're probably not gonna win that buy box for very long. And uh, you know, other, other repricers are gonna um, you know, win the buy box. And I don't know about you, Victor, but whenever people in any Facebook group say, hey, I just went ahead and repriced a bunch of my books, they're like, well, big jump in sales, right? Right. And that's because very quickly, like Victor said, whenever price you have set for your book can become outdated. You know, as every day goes by, that day, you know, that price becomes less and less relevant because it's further detached from the original market from when you price the book, right? Right. A week ago or two weeks ago, or certainly a month ago, the used offer count was probably different. The number of FBA sellers was different. And so having a repricer that's automated, meaning your price changes up and down based upon competition is a major competitive advantage, especially in this case, because it's free. And just so that we calm some nerves out there, are the, is the book going to be, you know, changing between a dollar and one thousand dollars? Like what's going to be the range and how does that yeah, so I mean, you can set all of this up, right? So you can feel as confident as you need to be. Uh, you can set up the rules of how, you, where you want to compete, who do you want to compete with, and for how long you want to compete with them. So the Amazon repricer really gets a lot of that, a, a lot of that extra work that you would normally have to do that would takes it away. Basically, it's like hiring an extra VA go, that goes in every second of every day, goes in and, and prices your book, books, and makes sure that you actually are competitive. Yep. So what we're going to show you is a couple of those ways that you can set up uh, those, you know, different strategies. There's not too many strategies, quite simple, honestly, which is great. Simple is good and free is good. But generally what we're going to do is we're going to try to pick a minimum price and a maximum price. And so all we want the repricer to do is automatically change our price between those two points. So like, let's say we have a book and let's say we honestly want to sell for 50, but we're willing to set a minimum price at 45 and a maximum price at 55. Yeah, our repricer is going to be able to change our price between that threshold. So I mean, not go below 45, but also not go above 55. It's going to keep us in that range. And Victor, at what time would it decide to change price between those two right. points? Yeah, it's actually when the price is actually uh, made it up to that point, right? When, whenever the minimum price is finally moved up to whatever price point you're trying to sell your book at, that's when the repricer kind of gets triggered. And now you're really competing for the buy box or for the lowest FDA price or whatever that is you're competing when the price actually gets to that point. And so I, it, it'll continually uh, go back up and down until your book is sold. Right? It's just like graphic. that, right? Yeah. You're gonna do it. We're like, hey, in between these two books. <laughs> you get it? You understand? <laughs> Does everyone understand, right? Yeah. <laughs> these two prices is what's gonna change. And uh, it's game time. As soon as that yeah. price gets below two, yeah. so just to, to drive the point further home, let's say our minimum price is 45, Victor, and our max price is 55, and let's say, the lowest, let's say we're competing for the lowest FBA offer. Let's say the lowest FBA offer is 35. Is our price going to be changing? No. 
No, it's not because yeah. we're not yeah. in that we're, rate. Right. Our price will kind of stay at that minimum price until the price finally moves up. Finally, all the all the um, books that are at 35 finally sell out and finally we'll get to that $45 range. And then now your book will start moving, you know, pennies up and down. Yeah. And of course, you can set this all up. So hopefully yeah. this is making sense. We're going to dive right into Victor's screen. He's going to show us how to set it up. So let's do it. All right. So here is my uh, Amazon uh, Seller Central. And I have a lot of inventory, as you guys can see here. Um, I have a um, the actual price of the book is trying to is selling for and a minimum and maximum. Now, if you don't have the minimum maximum set up, it's just part of your settings. You actually have to go to the top of your screen and uh, click on preferences. And then under preferences, make sure you have minimum and maximum check. So make sure you have check minimum ma maximum and so that you'll have those two um, other preferences there. And now you'll be able to put a minimum maximum price uh, and to get set up to have a um, a repricer, right? So you'll need a minimum maximum. You need the that actually filled out along with the um, your current price. All three of these filled out, and then you can go to this next step. And quickly, just how did people get to this screen right here first before? Because I know you just showed us how to add minimum and maximum price. Yeah. How do we get to this screen? This is just inventory, right? Right. Just manage all your inventory. So uh, click here, go to inventory, manage all inventory. Yeah. And I would recommend like that. marking that as well. Yeah, there. Yep. exactly. So what I would do here is click on this uh, inventory, manage all inventory, and then this bookmark. Make sure you click on that because once you do that, then it'll be there on the top left-hand side. Awesome. Let's keep going. Okay. Now, once you get uh, all that set up, now you want to go into uh, your automatic uh, repricer. And so what you want to do here is, again, on the top left-hand side, click on menu and then pricing and then automate pricing. So click on that. And then now we have all of our pricing rules. And uh, if you're new to this and you haven't actually set up a rule yet, that's fine. You're not going to see most of this that's down here. You're just going to have these two standard rules that Amazon sticks here, but nothing else. And we want to create a brand new rule for you. So create a custom rule and you'll have that click there. And of course, you want to click on the, the US. Um, but one of the first things you want to do over here is what do you want to compete with? Do you want to compete with the buy box? Do you want to compete with the lowest FBA? Or do you just want to compete with all of Amazon? Like whether or not they're the FBM, FBA, or Amazon, it doesn't matter. Do you want to compete with all? And so once you answer, once you answer that, that's where you want to click on which rule you want to go with, right? So the featured offer is basically the Amazon's um, wording for a buy box. So if you want to compete with the buy box, you want to click on featured offer. And you can want we show people what that means? Some people might not know what that means. What is the buy box? Can you show us a listing real quick? Show us a book, right? Show us a book on Amazon and show what the buy box is so people understand. Yeah, so this is pretty uh, simple here. At the Amazon buy box, there is a new buy box and the used buy box, right? So the new buy box is first, usually on the left-hand side over here. And basically it's the buy it now um, price that's over here. So if it's if it's if if it's new, you're going to see that first up here on the right and that's, you know, buy now. So that's why we call it the buy box. And then underneath that is the used buy box. And the, the used buy box is currently for $14 and 69 cents. And again, you click on that, there is the add to the cart. And that's why, again, why we call it the buy box, because you just click to add it to your cart. Yeah. And most sales come through the buy box, which is why it might be helpful, right? For you to compete for the featured offer, also known as the buy box. Okay. Very good. Let's right. go back. So um, in this particular example, we're just going to compete with the lowest uh, price, right? So you want to compete with the lowest price. And over here, just name your rule, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to put lowest, right? And then that's whatever you want to call it there. That's fine. And then you want to check just the US because that's where we're going to compete in. That's our market. And uh, this is where, you know, it kind of goes back and forth. What type of seller are you? Are you a seller that wants to match the lowest FBA price? Are you a person that wants to beat the lowest price by a penny? That's kind of, you know, what type of strategy do you have? I usually match the the lowest um, FBA price. I don't know about you, Joji. Yeah, I mean, you could, if you want, undercut by a penny. The thing you, that you want to think about is, right, whatever your minimum maximum price is, the book is going to stay between that range. So I know you might get concerned, oh, if I undercut by a penny, it's going to go all the way down to zero. Well, no, it's going to go to your minimum price and stop there. Right? That's right. the lowest you'll be able to go, which is why setting a minimum price that's actually profitable is really important. Most of the time, people just say match you know, the lowest offer, right. match the buy box. And kind of going up to that original choice that Victor made for this particular rule, 
what we're going to say is we're we're going to try to compete for the lowest competitive price and or sorry the lowest uh, offer price and right. whether or not you do the competitive offer or the buy box or the lowest price is up to you you guys can decide i would say that both of them are a good option you you know experiment with either one i think they're both good but um I, yeah i i think at this point we also need to hone in that the sale is actually when you purchase it, right? That's where the money is actually made. So right. these rules are going to help you actually sell the book a little bit more, yep. but it's really how cheap of a um, price you actually got on the book. So this will just help you slightly. And so right. these rules, you know, kind of focus on them, but they're not going to be game changing. Right. The game changing thing is how do you find the undervalued book? Right? Yeah. And that's trying to do a book mine, right? It's trying to right. get an undervalued book. So that's the where the magic happens. This is then, okay, let's sell the book for market value. Let's, let's correct money on it. Right. Right. All right. So, that's the difference between these two rules here. As you can see, there's a drop down here. If you want to beat it by one penny, you want to click on stay below the lowest price by a specific amount. Click on that and then either by click by a penny. And so now if the lowest price is $42, you'll be uh, $41.99, you know, yeah. and your price will be instant in, on Amazon. So that's actually one of the uh, positives that, uh, of the Amazon repricer is that it reprices within the second of, of anyone else repricing uh, yep. their inventory. Cool. So that's probably the positive there. So if I'm on the listing and Victor and I are competing, and I'm at $32 yeah. and he has a repricer from Amazon and he's, and that's between his min and max, $32 is between his min and max. And his rule is to undercut by penny. As soon as I change my price to $32, his is now $31.99. I'm like almost right. immediately, right? Almost immediately. And that's that's right. a major pro to the Amazon repricer, uh, which is also what's cool here is to the left of that, one penny, you also have the option to change by percentage, I think, if you want it. That's right. You can do some funky things here. You can say like, oh, I want to, you know, go down by 1% or half a percent or 5%. You can do a whole bunch of funky stuff, right? You can do- You can. There's a ton of different options here and we just don't, you know, we don't have, I don't want to make this an hour long video, but yeah, Yeah. uh, these are what most people do, right? They drop it by one penny or they match the price. Or they match the price. Either one, yeah, up to you. Uh, right, yeah, exactly. exactly. So when you let's just finish this out. When you add a one penny, you know, uh, basically we're going to drop the price by one penny. So that's what we clicked here, and then we're going to put a. If we want to just compete with the entire all of the whole marketplace, that's pretty much it. That's you click on one penny over here, and then um, you know, I actually put no because we don't want to uh, compete outside of Amazon. So no, oh, that's huge. And then, you don't want to compete. Yeah. You don't. You don't want to compete with eBay's prices or Thrift Books prices on, uh, you know, on their website or anything like that. You want to compete just with Amazon's prices. So I click no there, and then yes on the when I reprice the book, I want it to continue to reprice. So then I would click save, and so that would rule would be done. Um, but now if I want to compete just with FBA, right? I'm an FBA seller, and I want to compete just with FBA sellers. What I would do is click on specific type of offers, and then the same fulfillment, which is important, right? only offers with the same fulfillment method. And by doing that, now you're saying, hey, I want to drop a penny, but only on on sellers who are in like doing FBA with me. I don't want to compete with a uh, merchant fulfilled seller. Yep. yep. And uh, so, go ahead. Uh, all, I was, all I was gonna say is you guys can customize these rules yep. as much as you want. What I would say is competing for the lowest price, you know, undercutting by a penny, uh, competing only with the same fulfillment offer like FBA. I mean, that's a golden rule. I mean, that's, I think that's, that's industry standard. That's pretty good. You might disagree. You might say, you know, don't undercut by a penny, just match price. At the end of the day, you know, your business is your business and uh, you've got all these options to choose from. We're just trying to show you how you can do it. Mm-hmm. And be- before we leave here, let me show you what I do. So I, I, I usually click on match the lowest price. Um, and with, the same fulfillment and that's it. So basically I match all FBA prices, right? I'm not trying to undercut them. I want to match them. It's kind of aggressive, but not too aggressive. If I really wanted to be really aggressive, then I would try to beat the FBA pr- uh, price by penny. But right now I'm matching it. And so then I would uh, click save here. And the vast majority of my inventory is um, repriced that way on Amazon. So uh, then on the next screen um, after this, then you basically go in and and set that up. I don't know. Um, yeah. Should we show them, Joe? Yeah, we should. Or? We should show them at least one example. It's important yeah. to know that when you click save and exit here, it's not like all of your books are magically repriced. That's right. You've got to go set a minimum and maximum price for each individual book because every book is different, right? You don't want to sell every book for between thirty-five dollars and forty-five dollars because some books have much more value than that. Some books are worth one hundred and fifty bucks. Some books are worth seventy-five bucks. Some books are worth thirty dollars. So you've got to go look at each individual book put a minimum and a maximum price in. 
And so now Victor is going to show us how we can do that. Yep. All right. So as you can see, we just made our, our new um, rule called the lowest. And what we do now is once we find, once we got into this, on uh, this link, basically we just click on edit SKUs and uh, you can see that some of them actually, I haven't put a minimum maximum price in yet. And it's kind of letting me know, Hey, you can't price these yet, but these particular ones I can. So, so the ones that actually I have not repriced would have nothing in the, in the far right side over here, they would not have the FBA match. It would just be blank. Right. And so what we would want to do is click on um, take action. And then basically click on lowest. And if we were to right. click on lowest like that, there you go. It, that's it. it. That's it. In yeah. 15 minutes or less, yeah. your book will start repricing. Yeah. So everyone sees FBA match and they might be confused. Why does it say FBA match? Because that's the rule that you have already made. Right. That's your custom rule. You call the FBA match, which happens to be the same exact rule as what we just made, which is called lowest. So essentially, they're the same thing, right? right. Remember that exactly. you all get to choose the name of whatever your rule is. You can... Call it XYZ, you can call it Book Mine is awesome, you can call it Victor Gagos, you can go yeah. whatever you want, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So let, let me go with the one that actually doesn't have anything yet. As you can see, that I've already, I haven't actually um, put a minimum maximum to some of these, but some of them I have. And you can tell there's no rule on this far right hand side right. over here. So what we want to do here is just drop down and click on lowest. And there you go. That's all you did. I just drop down, click on lowest. And now I have two, I've just repriced two books. Right. And so there's a couple, ways that you would uh that you could do this right because you can kind of like bulk apply the rule correct like, let's say you didn't want to do that for each individual book how would you sort of like bulk yeah. Yeah. um say i want the same repricing rule for like all of these on this particular page sure so let's just say i have all the minimum maximum prices already completed the next thing up is click on this button here and basically it checks all the the listings and then now i just go to um bulk action and click on what rule i wanted to to do yep. and basically i would just click on lowest and all of them would, would pop well, yeah pop up so yeah it's it's actually really simple you could do one by one or you can do it 50 at a time yep now in terms of because people always get asked well what's the minimum what's the maximum price that right. comes down to reading the keepograph of the book that you purchased so what i'd recommend is going back to the beginning of the book mine academy series if you have uh, if you're not to that point yet because if you made your way to this video and you've gotten chronologically to the Bookman Academy, you absolutely would know how to set a minimum and a maximum price. You know what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. But, but if you're kind of new to the YouTube channel and you're new to this video and you're new to us, then make sure you go back to the beginning of the Bookman Academy series so that you can then understand why Keepa is incredibly important and how that will help you set a minimum and a maximum price, how that will allow you to identify when books are undervalued and also more importantly, when they're not undervalued. And also to determine what your minimum maximum price should be, what your target selling price should be. We've got all that covered. Victor, I think we did an incredible job. But before we go, let's just talk about the pros and then maybe some cons. So Amazon repricer, I'm going to go with the number one pro, in my opinion. You can disagree if you want. Is that a <laughs> It's free. <laughs> that's a huge, that's a huge plus. Like you, you can go and like subscribe to it and it's, you know, it's free. I'm like, there's no subscription. You just, yeah. if you're an Amazon seller, you, you get it for free. It's part of your, um, $40 that you pay every month. Yep. Number two, I think that's most important is that it's actually instant repricing. So a lot of other, uh, softwares, third party softwares out there, they have a limitation based upon what plan you pay for in terms of how often it's going to reprice. A lot of those might be, you know, a couple of you know, it could be under a minute. It could be seconds, honestly, depending on how much you pay for. But a lot of them can be up to 10 minutes, up to 15 minutes. The Amazon repricer is essentially instant. Yep. So uh, that's a major pro there. Um, can you talk about one of, so one of the major cons of third-party softwares, Victor, yeah. is what? Is, okay, so Amazon is the, you know, the proprietary of their data. And so there are third-party software. They work friendly. They're like friendly to third-party softwares. But basically, they're only giving them the top 20 sellers on a, on any listing. And that's one of the limitations that third-party software has that maybe Amazon itself doesn't have. And so if a listing has more than 20 sellers, there's a lot of times the, uh, those third-party software can't see FBA prices at all, or can't see anything past 20. So all that past 20 is kind of like a ghost to them. They, they're not able to, to kind of even put that into their calculations. So some you know, a lot of these third-party software is saying that like they, you know, they're like AI generated or they, they're, they're, you know, smart, intelligent type of software programs. But, you know, with only seeing the top 20, how smart could they be, right? But the Amazon repricer, you can see, because it's Amazon's data, you can see 
as many sellers as the, as a listing has. So if a listing has 150 sellers on it, you know, you're going to see all 150 and you'll be able to compete with the FBA because, you know, like say uh seller number 78 is is an FBA seller where you're going to be able to compete with them on the Amazon repricer, but on another party, a third party software, you wouldn't even know that it existed. Yeah. Can you just briefly show us because people are going to ask, well, how do yeah. you know if a listing has 50 people, 100 people, 10 people on it? Well, I mean, any type of most, almost every question could be answered with Keepa. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is this is the Keepa question on if you know if like a listing has more than 20 sellers, this is a great example. Most high school books actually have more than 20 sellers on a listing, but this uh, particular book, the entire year has way, well over 100 um, yep. used offer count, right? The entire yeah. time. And so, so we'll look most at, we'll of look the, the bottom graph there. Yeah, Everyone, bottom, bottom graph, graph on here. That black line of the bottom graph, it represents offer count. What's offer count, Victor? The offer count is how many sellers are on the listing, not necessarily how many how many units they have, but just how many right. sellers are on the listing. Right. So you can see there from Keepa, even if you didn't have Keepa, how could you tell on the Amazon listing? Victor, how many yeah, so, are? I mean, you can see new and used 132. Right there. That's how you can tell, okay, well over 20, right? So any third-party software will only be able to see uh, 20 of this 132. Literally, what, 112 of them would be, uh, they wouldn't be able to see them. Be hidden, right? Yeah, so be hidden. Major pro is that Amazon can see all of the sellers because Amazon is Amazon. Amazon owns that data. Right. right? Okay. Uh, the other thing is that another pro, I think, number three is... I think it's actually number four is um, it's easy to use, right? I mean, I don't think it was that hard to yeah. set up like click two buttons and you're done. Right. Pretty simple, right? So that's right. a pro. Exactly. That's good. It's not too hard. You just got to do a little bit of, you know, you just got experience going through the process, a couple of repetitions, you guys will be fine. And the other, I would say pro is that this is actually Amazon's reprice. What happens if Amazon makes a mistake? Are they going to take responsibility for it? Or are they going to say that's too bad? Yeah. So uh, they'll definitely um, own up to it, right? And help you. Uh, recover any losses that you had or help you cancel your orders if if that if their repricer messes up and there's documentation for that um which which is a, definitely a huge positive um i'm i've been a seller for many years and one of the things that i um you know heard years ago when i was uh, first starting out is that a one of the repricers actually made a huge mistake and actually priced a ton of books for like a dollar more than a few thousand Sellers actually were selling books for a dollar just because their repricer kind of messed up. And actually, all these sellers kind of lost tons and tons of money because they were they're having to send out these uh, books that they um, in, unintentionally sold for a dollar because of that repricer. And, uh, you know, that's something that uh, if you were with the Amazon repricer wouldn't have happened. So that's just a, one. That's another a pro to uh, working with the Amazon repricer. Absolutely. I think this is a wonderful video. I think it's going to help a lot of you out there that are trying to become full-time booksellers. One thing that I will say is despite these amazing pros, I actually don't even use it for a lot of my books. I actually do use a third-party repricing software called Pico. If you guys are interested in a video on how you guys can use Pico, then uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. But we think this is an awesome video. Victor, any uh, parting words before we head on out? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think there's one last pro to the Amazon repricer is it gets the job done, yeah. right? Exactly. Like, you know, my whole thing is, you know, what I'm trying to do for a repricer is just get the book sold, right? I, where I'm making most of my money is on the buy, right? Because I'm buying underpriced books or undervalued books and then selling for their true intrinsic value. And so I don't mind that the, my repricer doesn't, you know, isn't the best of the best out there. It just it just gets the book sold at the time I want it to be sold at. So. Sounds good. That's it. We hope you enjoy this Bookmine Academy video. We'll see you guys with another Bookmine Academy video here in the future. Stay tuned and have a good day.